G'day internet, Max Wright here, and today with the Bitcoin price grinding sideways, I thought we'd take a little bit of a moment to look at a bunch of whole of on-chain data and also just some just to understand the Bitcoin marketplace because it is a pretty exciting time, a very predictable time. And I think once you have all this information, you're really gonna put it into perspective and you'll be very, very excited as I am for the next six months. So let's get into it here. Um, let's click over to here and we'll see, yeah, Bitcoin price grinding sideways for the last two months. Um, there's a pretty uh, funny meme here. In fact, is this it? Yep, here it is right here. It's just, uh, the Bitcoin bulls, they are stuck between 30K and 35K and they just can't get out. That poor bull, I feel sorry for it. But um, that's, uh, that's pretty much the story of the last two months, although it did go up to like 40, but we are just grinding away sideways, sideways, sideways. And here's what's happening, in my opinion. What is happening is that Bitcoin is being transferred from the weak hands to the strong hands. And that's just what happens in these consolidation periods. People are getting bored. Ah, it's not moving. Oh, it's getting bored. I'm going to sell it. People are experiencing losses because they bought, bought back here at 60s, at 50s, at 40s. And if you, for those people, trust me, if you just hold it, I think you're going to be very, very happy over the next uh, 6 to 12 months. But if you don't, if you're all out, then um, okay, th then this space isn't for you. And it's time for you to step aside and for Bitcoin to get in strong hands. And what that strong hands means is these are people who just are not going to sell. They, they believe in the vision of Bitcoin. They believe in, they understand, I would argue, not just believe in, they understand what's happening with the global economy. They understand what's happening with money printing. They understand that, what, that Bitcoin is a scarce resource that has value and it will only uh, go up in the future. Maybe not day by day, but and maybe not even year by year, but almost certainly cycle by cycle. Uh, and so and by cycle by cycle, I mean four year cycle. So um, this is kind of what's happening. And while we're chopping around in here, um, by the way, while we're chopping around in here, um, I, I haven't made too many trading videos because it's just, there's not that interesting. However, I do want to share something with you. I have found a way to make money uh, with Bitcoin with a trading bot when it's just trading around going sideways. If that's of interest to you, let me know in the comments below and I might do a training for you guys uh, on that so you can you can uh, take a look at that. So let's see how that goes if, in the comments. If there's lots of comments, people uh, wanting to make money while um, Bitcoin is trending sideways, I can help you out with that. Let me know if you want that training. Okay, so let's get on to what I really want to talk about, which is some of... Um, just some, just some stuff that I found on Twitter, which I just think is really, really important. When you understand this, some of it's psychology, like this one right here. This is a, a uh, it's, it's, on a, um, it's on a forum, it's on a Bitcoin forum from 2010, okay? So the, the Bitcoin, uh, on the Bitcoin forum, this person says, in 2010, the price of Bitcoin is, I think, in the pennies. I have only 600 Bitcoins, virtually all generated last week. I missed the bus. I'll be buying some soon. This concept of missing the bus, this is still what people say today. And I think it's really important to understand that every time you can always look back in the past and see that it was cheaper back then. And you can feel like you missed the bus. But my goodness, are you making a gigantic mistake? We are still very, very, very early. It's super early. You know, the number of people who have Bitcoin, own Bitcoin, it's somewhere in the order of five to 15% of the global population. My opinion that within kind of 10 years, that'll be somewhere closer to 60 to 70% of the global population will be in Bitcoin, right? So we are super early. So it's just, it's nice to know that when you're having those thoughts, oh man, I missed it. It's already done its big run. No, you haven't. You haven't missed it at all. Uh, we did that meme earlier. And so um, here's, a, here's, an, here's an interesting one. So these are the four cycles. Uh, so the, 2000, the 2011 wasn't a cycle. It was a pump, but it wasn't a cycle. Here's 2013, 17, and 21. And this is actually, um, now every time that they just get reset. So this, um, this, this yellow line actually continues on from here, but to make it useful, they've just, they've chopped it and brought it down. Chopped it, brought it down, chopped it, brought it down. And these, so these blue lines right here, let me triple check that, yes. These blue lines represent the halving. I need to say there's a faint vertical blue line here, faint vertical blue line here, faint vertical blue line here. Let me just triple check that. It is, 
does it say? Days per cycle from previous all-time high. Oh, uh, it's actually, hang on, days per cycle, previous all-time high until the new all-time high. Oh, that's not true, not true. So it's, it's not measuring from the halvings. All right. Uh, actually, I'm not double sure. Uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not double sure. I'm not sure. But nonetheless, you can cut it and slice it any way you wish. Um, the, 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 it's actually from the all-time high. So hence 2011 is a thing because there was no halving um, in 2011. Um, but what, the, what they're, they're saying here is that every point in the cycle, in all of these cycles, there's always this huge pullback and then this consolidation phase. You see here this huge pullback and then this consolidation phase in the middle of it. All right, here we go. And then there's this huge pullback and then this consolidation phase. And right now in 2021, we seem to be in the same thing. There was this huge pullback from 60 down to 30. And now there's this consolidation phase. And it will start to grind up, I suspect. And as I've said in many videos, I expect this consolidation phase to last several months. But it will grind up and eventually, I think we're gonna see a pop when it goes over 42,000. And then we'll see another big pop when it goes over 65,000 and we get a new all-time high this year. I think we're gonna get two really big pops at those points, okay? So keep your eyes out for that. This is just part of the course um, in terms of, I think this blue line here is the number of days from the previous all-time high. And you can see that it's, you know, it happens right around here, 129, 148, something like that. Every time this consolidation phase starts really close to that, the number of days after the previous all-time high. So all-time high was here, reset this to zero, and around about this period, we come back, we, we pull back at what was it, 170, and we go off again. So that is something to consider. Just understand, this plays out every single cycle, and if you're new, all you know is you bought at 60, it's now at 30. All I know is I lost 50% of my money and Bitcoin's a pain in the ass. Just, it takes experience. You'll live through this cycle. And the good news is, next cycle, you're going to be the experienced one. There's going to be millions upon millions, millions, way more than that. Hundreds of millions, possibly billions of people coming in. They're going to be inexperienced. They're going to do it. Uh, and so the, you will have the experience of like, ah, there's another 50% drop, no problem. It's like a Bitcoin price dropped from 500,000 down to 100,000. What do you care? Your entry point was 60,000, right? And I've done this cycle three times, two other times now. So I bought back in 2012 and 2013. I lived this cycle. I lived this cycle. I'm living through this cycle. At this point, it's just par for the course. But you will get there too. Okay, you will experience this and there'll be billions of people looking to you for comfort. It's like, is this normal prices dropping by 50, 60%? Yes, it's normal. You don't get these massive 10x, 100x rises per cycle when you, without these pullbacks. It's part of it and you need to understand that. So calm yourself down, hodl, and I think it's going to turn out very, very nicely for you. Some on-chain metrics here. So this is um, the miner's net position change. So what this means is, as of just recently, the miners have started hodling again. Now this was quite predictable. I'm not sure if I said this in a video or not, but this is kind of, um, so what happened with the, the China banned Bitcoin, let's not go into it, but nonetheless, miners, sorry, yeah, miners did leave China. What they had to do is they had to turn off all their mining power, put them on boats, send them over. As a result, the hashing power adjustment dropped significantly. All right, bunch of technical mumbo jumbo. What the hell does that mean? It means all of the existing miners are way more profitable. So here's how mining works. You might spend uh, in a month, some amount of money, let's say a million dollars on electricity to mine Bitcoin. And you might you know, get 1.5 million in Bitcoin. Now, for mostly, in order to keep your business afloat, you've got to sell your million, a million dollars worth of Bitcoin uh, to pay for the electricity, and you'll get to keep half a million dollars. Now, you can either put it in profit and buy more machines, which means you have to sell your Bitcoin, or you can hodl your Bitcoin, right? Either one of those two scenarios. But here's what happened. In the last few months, the miners are way more profitable because a lot of the miners aren't there. They're not mining Bitcoin. So what does that mean? Those guys who are way more profitable, they're spending a million dollars electricity and not making one and a half million, they're making two and a half million dollars worth of Bitcoin per month, for example, right? So they have way more Bitcoin. They only need to sell a billion. Now they've got um, that extra one and a half million dollars worth of Bitcoin. 
they maybe they take profits and sell a little bit, but it sees a lot of them don't have to sell. And so what are we seeing? They're starting to hodl again. And if you can see back here historically, it's usually good times to uh, get involved, get involved with Bitcoin. So we can expect that miners, uh, I think for the next few months at least, are gonna start hodling quite well. All right, moving on, on-chain metrics. So this is the number, this is the amount of uh, Bitcoin on exchanges. So you can see here that the trend was for the amount of Bitcoin on exchanges to go down. This was a continuous change, uh, sorry, trend for quite a while now, since the beginning of the year. And it meant a supply shock for the Bitcoin world. The number of Bitcoin on exchanges for people to buy just weren't there, right? In order to sell your Bitcoin, you have to put it on an exchange. Now, during this last breakout, uh, or sell off, I should say, a whole bunch of new coins came back onto the market. That's this uptrend here, okay? And that kind of, you can see it coming onto the market here right around the time of this all-time high. And from there, the price went down, right? So, but now we see this has sort of turned a corner and has started heading back down. The question becomes, for certainly it's a good sign for the short-term Bitcoin price as money starts to leave the exchange. People are starting to think, okay, I don't need to trade it. I don't need to have it ready to sell. I'm starting to feel confident. And what happens? The question is, is this trend going to continue down, way down here somewhere? And we're going to set even newer lows on the exchange. That's something to watch. And I think it's a very, very bullish sign. What else is happening on chain? Yeah, this is super important. So the Lightning Network has 1800 Bitcoin on it at the moment. Now that's tiny, that's a baby. What's the Lightning Network? So you're familiar with what's happening in El Salvador. All of that is happening because of the Lightning Network. You can't use Bitcoin as a currency, especially in third world countries, where you you cannot use it when you're buying things. You cannot do that. What you are um, with normal base level Bitcoin, what you do is you have to take Bitcoin to the Lightning Network, which is you know the the, the Bitcoin protocol was built and adjusted so that we could use Lightning Network. Now, all of a sudden, Bitcoin transactions are free and instantaneous. And it's perfect for buying a cup of coffee or you know, paying your bills at you know, your very low dollar things. And so what, this see, what we're seeing is that although it's very, very small, the Lightning Network is increasing. 100 Bitcoin just in the last week went onto the Bitcoin Lightning Network. So this is very, very bullish for the, um, the ecosystem of Bitcoin being money again. Bitcoin was money and a store of value if we go back four or five years ago. At some point, 2017 especially, the fees got too high and it stopped being money, as it stopped being a way to transfer, stopped being something to use for payments because the fees were too high. At that time, Lightning Network was invented to solve the problem. It's taken about four years to do all the development and build all the ap applications on top. And now we're starting to see the fruit from that labor and we're starting to see the Lightning Network accelerate very, very quickly. And that is something that is very bullish because people will need to buy Bitcoin to put it in the Lightning Network so that they can use it for day-to-day -day payments. We've seen El Salvador make it uh, money and we just had an announcement a few days ago that Paraguay is going to submit a bill to their Congress, or I think they call it Parliament, in uh, I think in the next week or so. So again, very, very bullish news. Just two more things to check out here. Um, and who needs Bitcoin? Well, let's check out what's happening in Lebanon. Um, it's a, there's an economic crisis there. And in the last two years, I think it says it up here, as the Lebanese pound loses 90% of what it was worth in late 2019, and with bank accounts continuing to be seized, not your keys, not your money, it's no surprise Google searches for Bitcoin in the nation are at an all time high. So let's look at what happened. With 10,000 uh, Lebanese pounds, you can buy all of these groceries. Today, just two years later, all you can get is the liter of milk, right? So this country, Lebanon, uh, sorry, I've already said Lebanon, Lebanon um, uh, Venezuela, uh, and a whole host of South American countries uh, and Central American countries. These places are getting their currencies destroyed and their salvation is Bitcoin. And if you think that governments around the world are going to keep printing money and more and more countries are going to experience this, you're going to see more and more countries come online. Not necessarily with the government, 
but certainly at the citizen level, the citizens are going to flee to Bitcoin in droves. All right. And lastly, this one here from Willy Woo. So again, the blue is the price and the red, flow, uh, the red line is the flows, um, f the, the, the spot exchange flows. So what does it say? As price grinds sideways bearish, which is this trend here, coins are being scooped off the exchanges at a very bullish rate. Um, P.S. The latest sizing of withdrawals versus deposits are at local highs at levels that signal a bottom. Whales are scooping. So what this has happened means people are putting it on the, the, the amount of coins on the exchange is shrinking right here. Okay. And what that means is again, there's just less money to, there's less supply to buy as more demand comes in. Bitcoin is being transferred from the weak hands to the strong hands right now in this consolidation period which was it this one was it this one no which is this process here that happens in the middle of every bull cycle all right guys i hope some of those on-chain metrics and some of that information in the industry is um, useful for you i hope it helps you understand exactly where this industry is going exactly where bitcoin is going and i think where the price of bitcoin is going so let me know in the comments below do you like this kind of content if you what's the most important thing for you that says bitcoin is bullish right now which piece of data i'd love to hear it smash up that like button smash that subscribe button and i will take i will see you soon take care